That's right guys, a follow-up rant. Who doesn't love a follow-up rant on a Friday? Now, in the last episode you saw, which should have been the movement review, if you haven't seen that episode, click up here and watch that. Uh, but in that episode, I made the bold statement that with Rolex, you do pay for marketing, but with brands like Movement, you only pay for marketing. Now, it seems that assertion calls for a deeper dive, so let's dive deeper. So, so deep. Aww. It's 7.55 p.m. Let's get down to business. <laughs> Rolex is all marketing. You're only paying for Rolex's expert marketing team. You've spent all your money just throwing it away on a brand just for the sake of a brand. Ah yes, tales as old as time. Marketing, 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 marketing. I get it, when a company's whole identity is filled with hashtags and at signs, what's the name of that at sign? Like I know dot 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 is ellipsis, and I know the and is an ampersand, but what is that at? Like, what is the name of that? I'm Jory Goodman, and you're watching the Disney Channel. Do, 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 do. Anyway, when a brand's whole identity is filled with these stupid social media icons, it's hard to take them seriously, that's for sure, but why is Rolex getting swept into this? Like, I get it. I compared my Rolex Explorer 2 to that movement, gross, vintage, minimalist watch, whatever movement called it, a bowel movement, that's what I call it. But I put my Rolex next to that movement just to compare the size, and then I kind of compared the brands a little bit. Uh, but then some people in the comment section they were getting it a little bit twisted, and they were saying exactly what I said they would say. Well, Rolex is all marketing anyway, so why is Rolex okay, but movement isn't? Well, I have a feeling that a lot of people really don't like Rolex marketing team because Rolex SA is worth about $8.8 .8 billion. Yeah, that's a whole lot of money, and Rolex has one of the largest brand equities out of any watch company ever. But guys, Rolex didn't get that brand equity by mistake. They didn't get it by fooling anybody. They didn't get it by paying someone off when they didn't get it overnight. Definitely not overnight. In fact, Rolex is about 115 years old. They've had a lot of time to figure things out. And believe me, back when Hans Wilsdorf started Rolex, there wasn't social media. There weren't as many ways to bypass goodwill as there are nowadays. You see, nowadays, companies like MVMT can essentially pay to flood social media, convincing people that their products are cool and good and luxurious. But back in the 1920s, if your product didn't work, it just didn't work. And then people people would often stop buying it and then, you know, it wasn't sustainable. Your company would be dead. And the fact is, in Rolex's case anyway, no pun intended, case, oyster case, it's a little watch joke. But seriously, all jokes aside, in Rolex's case, they've had that 115 years to work out the kinks and put out consistent, reliable, dependable products that people can use and they're truly functional. In fact, a lot of the things that Rolex initially put into production are things now we kind of take for granted. For instance, in 1925, Rolex purchased all the rights to the Perigo and Parade patent number 114948, which was for a threaded crown. That's right, we take this for granted nowadays, uh, initially, the Perigo and Pare patent, that threaded crown was kind of inefficient and Rolex, you know, inevitably uh, ended up modifying it. But again, this is something that my Seiko Tuna freaking has. So yes, things like threaded crowns, we love these things. They're very common in watchmaking. Seiko uses them. Every company we know of uses them. Hamilton doesn't use them enough, unfortunately. They're khaki field watches, they're khaki king. Why not give it a threaded crown? I don't care that it's in titanium now. Wow, cool. You're doing the Invicta thing, engraving it on the side, disgusting. Just give it a threaded crown. But I digress. Rolex was one of the first people to actually put a threaded crown into production, and for that, I thank them. For this was an example of Rolex recognizing a potential vulnerability within the wristwatch community and finding a solution for it. It's qualities like that that make Rolex the standard when people think wristwatch. Because let's face it, there are much more expensive companies, right? Patek Philippe, Vacheron Constantine, AP, uh, things like Piaget, even weirder things like, uh, oh man, do I want to say Richard Meal? I don't want to say Richard Meal. Why am I thinking of Richard Meal? <coughs> what I'm trying to 
gotta say is there are a lot more otology companies that are a lot more expensive than Rolex, uh, yet for some reason when people think of the standard, the gold standard, they think of Rolex. It's like, you know, soft drinks, Coca-Cola, favorite animal, owls. I say something, you think of it. Tudor, dumpster fire. Invicta, dumpster fire. Ulysses Nardin, dumpster fire. Wow, I could do this all day. Word association, that's what I was thinking of. It's word association, simple. But okay, I know people are getting bored, their eyes are kind of glazing over, but okay. What makes Rolex so dang expensive nowadays? Because that's what we're talking about. I compared Rolex to MVMT, so why is Rolex so dang expensive? It's gotta be the marketing, right? We're all being fooled. Well, okay, I bring up the history because life doesn't exist in a vacuum, and part of the reason why Rolex is able to fetch such high prices and why their value retention is so great is because of their 115 year history. But okay, let's fast forward to present day because let's face it, that's what most people care about. Uh, according to most estimates you'll find online, Rolex makes about $2,100 for every $7,000 in product. Now, I'm no mathematician, but that's about a 30% margin. I know some people think Think that's ridiculous but the truth is that's actually pretty reasonable and that's kind of the standard when we look at market research as a whole 30 percent is not crazy but of course the one metric we don't have that we would absolutely love to know is exactly how much it costs rolex to produce one of their average watches so we're talking about a stainless steel watch right i am assuming it probably costs them less than five grand for one of their average units because uh, again for every $7,000, if they're able to pocket $2,100, they're probably leaving a good cushion there. And uh, again, we can expect them to be spending it on uh, merchandise, sponsorship opportunities, such as sports, uh, race car events, things like that, and yes, marketing. But here's something that I always mention, I kind of harp on this and I stand by it. Let's take a Rolex, my Rolex Explorer 2, for instance. Now let's go ahead and remove all logos, all insignias, all branding from that watch so that it's just blank. There's nothing that screams Rolex. You're still left with a very solid, reliable, precise chronometer watch with all the cool attributes that it has. Again, date complication, really innovative jumping independent hour hand, threaded crown with 100 meter water resistance rating. Again, it is a chronometer, uh, GMT complication. Um, it's just a really solid watch, but again, we don't know if it's a Rolex. We've, we've removed all branding from it. Then let's take a watch from a company like MVMT. And again, we've now had some firsthand experience with one. Let's go ahead and do the same thing with that watch. We'll remove all branding so nothing screams MVMT. Uh, you can't see any logo, any branding whatsoever. What would you be left with? Exactly. And listen guys, I get it. At the end of the day, the movement is a whole lot less for the company to produce than the Rolex, and it's also a whole lot less for the consumer to purchase than the Rolex, right? But when we remove all branding, all logos, and we look at these two bare bones watches, no branding whatsoever, nothing to sway us but the quality themselves, there's a huge disparity in the products we receive. So assuming both of these companies mark up their watches, is what MVMT does a whole lot more righteous than what Rolex does? No, I would argue what MVMT does is a whole lot worse because they're not selling you anything with any sort of lineage, any sort of precision, any sort of quality control. Sure, Rolex has been doing the same thing forever and they have a ton of brand equity and yes, their things are much more expensive than these fashion watches and sure, Rolex does do at least a 30% markup, but what you're, what you're left with at the end of the day is still a very solid product where movement leaves you with just a piece of garbage that's gonna go into a landfill. Movement and other companies like Movement take garbage products, promote garbage products, mark up those garbage products, sell you garbage products, and then you are left with garbage. It is simple. So in conclusion, I'm sorry, this is, I'm so passionate about this. With companies like Rolex, yes, you do pay for marketing, but with companies like MBMT, you are only paying for marketing. And that's the truth. I need a cool catchphrase, like, and there you have it. See, none of it doesn't sound cool. And that's the time. Ooh. <laughs> the time's been told. 
So guys, I'm sure some of you will not agree with me. I hope you at least understand where I'm coming from and uh, I tried not to yell too much in this episode. I'm sure people will just accuse me of being a watch snob because even when I reviewed the MBMT watch, like you guys saw that it was garbage. I wasn't hiding anything. Gato, my editor, is a very good editor, but it's not like he was covering up the garbage with some like weird, like, you, I call it like I see it, guys. But people still told me I was being a snob. Because let's face it, Gato's a great editor, but there's no way that he could do anything with that movement, that bowel movement. But guys, if you enjoyed yourself, if you learned something, and maybe if you're just enjoying the conversation, then please consider hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on any of the content we put out here. And special thanks to my channel members. We by far get the majority of our support from my channel members. It's essentially like YouTube's Patreon. If you want to support the channel, uh, you get an extra piece of content every week with more on the way. Uh, we're going to do a little announcement about that. Um, please consider joining the channel. Hit that join button next to the subscribe button it's like $4.99 a month $4.99 and uh, the channel does get the majority of that support so thank you so much links in the description below to my Amazon affiliate store check out www.thetimetellershop.com the number one place to find affordable vintage luxury watches like comment subscribe show this with everyone you know I'm Jory Goodman the time teller and always remember I didn't invent time I just tell it <laughs>